Fabio Marchesi is, of course, is an inventor. He has invented a lot of uh, health machines that they can really help to heal, but this we will discuss in another time. Of course, he's a, a writer, and he's really a professor which is involved, I will say, not teach, he's involved with sub-quantum physics, and he's the one very popular in Italy and the not in Italy, that he has the capacity to make the sum quantum physics understandable to the normal people. So please proceed. Sorry. Oh, thank you so much. And I want to say also thank you to this huge opportunity that uh, ex your Excellency Ambassador Angelo Torriello to create this event, these words, humanity, and to give me the opportunity to be here to share what I will try to share in this uh, little time, in the time I have, uh, the most astonishing discoveries that changed my life in relation to the consciousness, in relation to the quantum physics, in relation to hermetic philosophy. So, I would like to start, uh, I have some slide, I don't know if it's working there. I would like to start uh, uh, putting the attention on, on the progress the humanity have in the last thousand, in this last thousand of years. So it's, it's like a little exercise I ask you to do a little exercise of uh, imagination and try to imagine how the humanity life, human life was on our planet just few thousand of years ago. just few thousand of years ago compared to the history of all the, our planet, the history of our universe, few thousand of years are nothing. Try to imagine the house where we were living. When, when we think to the reality, the actual modern reality is, is easy to be focused on all the problem the reality have, all the problem on the relation, but I, I would like to, to start to consider instead the huge progress that humanity had in the last centuries. Unbelievable huge progress. Just consider only the, the, the house where we were living. We were living in huts until a little time ago. What, what, what we have been able to do, what we have been able to do. So impressive, an impressive progress. Progress is made by change. Change is a word that everybody seems to love this word, but is a very, very delicate word because everybody when think to change, think to change of other, think to change of the reality ask for change in the government, ask for change in what uh, quantum physics uh, uh, teached me, is, uh, taught me, is something really, really impressive because uh, there is a, a very strong relation on our consciousness and the reality that each one lives. So we, we have a very, very important uh, role and power on the, on the reality that's around us. So we have been able of huge improvement in science, in technology, in construction, housing, transportation, communication, hygiene, life expectancy, art, beauty. And what about happiness? What about happiness? How, how we can be sure that we are more happy now with all this improvement than 1,000 or 2,000 or 200 years ago? What's the problem of happiness? Happiness is something that is related on consciousness, on consciousness, and, and in the ability to produce change. Change that don't have to happen outside us, but have to happen inside us. So reality inevitably change. What the past could, be, could have been perfect, also to be happy, can no longer work in the present. But the real problem, what, uh, the, 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 the very important point I would like to talk about, is the relation that there is between the consciousness and reality. 
So I will try, I tried in my life uh, to, to get the best as possible from the, the most brilliant mind the humanity had. There have been very few individuals that have been able alone to produce huge changes to the advantage of all. While many are only able to complain, while many are only able to wait for change from others, there are few individuals sometimes that have real courage to produce change. And one, is, one of these individuals is this one. This one is an absolute genius. He has been able to realize that the only things that everybody was believing that was exactly the same for everyone, forever, space and time, is not, there is nothing that is not related to you. Also, space and time, everybody thinks that the space and time is the, the same for all? No. Also, the space and time is related to you. All the reality that you live is related to you. And he tried to told us something very astonishing because uh, I know the science, the science made uh, uh, unbelievable discovery, the technology. Science is based on considering real only what is observable, measurable, and demonstrable. Because when, 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 you, buy, when you buy a cellular phone, when you buy uh, uh, anything pro produced by the technology, it must work if you are happy or if you are not happy. So science uh, put their attention in, in produced devices that can work independently from you. But the one who made the most important discovery in quantum physics tried to told us that your reality is depending on you. And the, the, the synthesis of this is very simple. No problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. Einstein tried to told us, when, when we see the problem around us, we, we, we believe that the problem are, are come from others, that we have no, 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 <laughs> no relation. But the most strong, important discovery of quantum physics say that our consciousness is what creates the reality that each one live. Each one live a different reality. And each one have a huge power in the reality he lived. So I, I like to, to start with, uh, with, <laughs> with uh, th this is a very valuable, uh, this is a person that I admire so much. He was pr professor at Berkeley, uh, Professor M. Um, Carlo Cipolla. He, he was an expert on the new economy and the fine have done many research about the new possibility that uh, internet uh, uh, create also in, in, in the economy. His study on the new economy led him to, to, define, to define the basic law of human stupidity. So he made a generalization and, and put uh, human being in four uh, general category. So there is the bandits. The bandits are the individual whose action damage other to take personal advantage. So the bandits are the ones that when do something, they do for their personal advantage and they don't care to damage others. Naive are the ones that specialize in helping others but in damaging themselves. So there are many people, heroes also, that uh, the stupid, and that's the, the most dangerous, are the ones that whose action make damage to themselves and to others. Why I want to talk about, I want to start from this, because the intelligent, the one who def he defines intelligent, are the one whose action produce advantage for themselves and for others. So if we had only few individuals that produce the change for the progress of all the humanity, is because there are so many people that don't, don't don't have the consciousness to make a change to start in generating advantage from themselves and from others. If each or one, if each of us can make a change and can start to have a behavior, a belief, an imagination that can produce advantage for others and for itself, 
that humanity can change in a very, very, very easily and fast way. I want just to read very, very quick because this, is, this, is, this can, can make a smile, but this is something that is impressive when I, when I get this research of Carlo Cipolla. And I invite you to, 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 to go deep in this, uh, looking for Googling or, or, or looking for reading for his book. A stupid person is a person whose action causes damage to another person or to a group of person while deriving not advantage for himself and even possibly incurring damages, losses. Always and inevitably, everyone underestimates the number of stupid individuals in circulation. The probability that a certain person will be stupid is independent of any other characteristic of this person. That's, this is very dramatic, because he found that the possibility that a human is stupid, so that generate damage for others and for himself is totally independent from culture, race, religion, level, economical situation, so can be everywhere. <laughs> no, stupid, okay. no stupid people always underestimate the damaging power of stupid individuals. In particular, no stupid people constantly forget that all times and places and under any circumstances to deal and or associate with stupid people always turn out to be a costly mistake. And the last laws of stupidity is a stupid person is the most dangerous type of person. Is the most dangerous also than bandits and, and so why 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 I, I want to start from this? <laughs> okay. I want to start from this because uh, the ability to have a behavior that can advantage yourself and the reality around yourself is a matter of consciousness. And uh, quantum physics discoveries, the most astonishing, I, I, I will show you something that's, that's the most impressive, can let us make this change so uh, can let us have a, a different understanding of our action on the reality that is not only based on what is visible, measurable, or, or explicable, but is most of all based on what is invisible. Who made the progress of our society possible? Which purpose they had? So we, 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 which was the purpose? Why? Why many people uh, are only able to complain and, but they don't want to produce change because they want to stay tied to their familiar, to their habits, to what they believe? And why there are someone that is able to produce change? We, which purpose they had? Uh, this is one of the father of quantum physics. I want just to introduce what, <laughs> because I'm talking about quantum physics most of all. Every valuable human being must be a radical and rebel. For what he must aim at is to make things better than they are. So this is Thank one you. teaching of the father Thank you. of quantum rebel physics. Rebel is very important. Yes. Make things better than they are. So when we burn on this planet, we found a kind of reality. So we can do something to make everything better or something to make it worse or something to try to keep it all the same. But uh, this is the humanity progress maker team. So this is what I choose as the most brilliant mind humanity have about the people that have been able to produce all the progress. Now we, we, we don't consider that uh, Today is possible with a cellular phone, call anyone, any other person in the world. You can be in, instantly in contact with any other human being in the world. Through a cellular phone, you can assess all the knowledge of the human history, just putting a keyword. That's an unbelievable progress. 
Also, only, only 40, 50 years ago, only the information that someone can have was coming from the top. Someone on the top was deciding what you can know and what you cannot know. There is no way to have a direct communication. So is going on, what is going on in the planet is a very strong revolution, thanks to this, this possibility that each individual has to access all the knowledge and to communicate and share ideas to each other. And these have been possible thanks to this individual. The first one I love particularly is Giordano Bruno, is the symbol of the freedom of thought. It's the one that, 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 that disobey to, to, to the rule of that time and start to think uh, free with freedom. He's the one who discovered that in the universe there are billions of stars and billions of planets before having the telescope to check it. So he was using intuition to access the truth of the reality. Descartes is famous for um, cogito ergo sum sive existo. Everybody know Cartesian for the a Cartesian access in mathematics. Is a very, he made a very huge uh, leap, but most of all is, is, is famous for, for uh, the, the, the what he tried to share about the huge potential that every individual has. I invite you to check his method. He wrote a book about the method in how to access directly the truth. So he, he was trying, uh, he was believing that the only things that make all humans similar is to have a light in the reason that can let you access directly the truth. So he tried to explain how to do, how to use the mind better, so to, to let your huge potential to be useful to you and other active. And Leibniz. Leibniz is an absolute genius. Is the one that started the revolution that let us today have computer and laptop and internet. He was a really genius. At six years, he already knew Latin, just reading the books pre, uh, from, from his father's books. At 15 years, he was enrolled at university. At 17 years, he, he got a degree in philosophy. At 20 years, he got a PhD in law. At 27, he invented a very complicated calculator, mechanical calculator, and he's one of the most huge mathematician the history had and the one who invented the binary arithmetic. That's one that let computer work. I'm talking about 350 years ago. Which was the purpose of Leibniz? The most perfect society is that whose purpose is supreme happiness of the individual and the community. All the research of happiness of, of, of Leibniz to generate uh, automation, to invent the automation, was finalized in considering happiness the supreme goal of the individual and the society. For him, the automation, the, the goal, why he invented the automation? Because he was thinking every human has a huge potential in doing something good for the humanity. And using what? Using his imagination, using his thought. So he, he, he developed, he started the, the, the automation to let people work less. So the automation, the goal was if people can work less, then can, they can use the, the, the very power, what makes any individual really powerful. The use of the imagination, the use of the thought to generate new ideas, to generate arts, to generate beauty. I'm sure that you have, you know, but I would like that you think about. Imagine action. So the action of the image if you analyze the world, is the action of the image. It's not something static. It's an action of your image, what you can visualize. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Because I, 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 when I discover the, the root, the ancient root of the word imagination is unbelievable. The ancient root of the word imagination say, put in action the magician that's in you. 
magician, ma magician not as normal today is believed, the magician has ability to interact with the action of nature only using act of will, only using act of imagination. So don't think about magician, illusion. Non illusion. To do like that, <laughs> because in the modern English we have given the connotation, this connotation, magic. When you say something magic, everybody thinks, okay, about manipulation. No. You, you, I, I am an inventor, and I've been a, a passionate in, in, in studying and, and try to, to 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 read about the the life of the most important inventor in the history of humanity. And, and when, I, when I get the inventor, I started from Leonardo da Vinci, and, and to me was so surprised when I, I realized and I found documents about the maximum ambition of the Renaissance uh, scientist was to become a magician. And uh, nobody knows, modern scientists don't know that, uh, for example, Newton, Newton was an alchemist. He wrote more about alchemy than about physics. So. Uh, the maximum ambition of the scientists in the Renaissance was to become able to have a total master control of imag the imagination. Because this is not so easy. This is not so easy because you can be able to have master control of your imagination only when you win you, all your fears. The fears you have is the one that don't let you control your imagination. So there are many people that use the imagination only to think what, what is fair of. And, and quantum physics says that more you imagine what you don't like, and more you make this probable. <laughs> so, okay. So happiness. Happiness was the real purpose of who started the all the progress that let us, let us today have direct communication, have computer, and hin have an internet. And I'm sure that Leibniz, when he started thinking about binary arithmetic, when the computer was not existing, only his, his mechanical uh, calculator was the first one. In one dream of Leibniz, there was this imagine a child that can play with something that can let access directly, directly all the knowledge available. And this is what, making the, what is making the change in the humanity now, is the consciousness of young people that can don't just wait for answer, but can go straight making questions and getting answer by themselves and not having someone that tell what is good or what is black. Now we have reached the time in which each of us start giving his contribution to creating changes that advantage themselves, but also other, by considering happiness first. We can easily make the world a better and happier place for, to live for all if everyone stop complain, if change his mind and start giving his active contribution. Each of us have a huge potential power making this happen. So one, one, one of the things that, that, that make me uh, feel so, so huge emotion when I start to, to read not what this kind of individual discover, but how they was relating one to each other. And the relation, the rela relation between this human, this, this is the real father of quantum physics, Einstein, Schrödinger, Eisenberg, Bohr, and Planck. These are the real father of. And the relation, if you, if you read, there is a book that changed my life, is that the 30 years that shocking physics. And he talked about uh, what, what they was discovering, how they was sharing, and what, what, how they change, have been able to make discovery that changed the world. They was in love. They was in communion of intent. There was no competition like every day that everyone is in competition to every other else. So they were just trying to go beyond the familiar, beyond the common sense, beyond the, the normal scientific investigation to try to go deep in the intimacy of what we call reality, to try to understand what is made of and how does it work. And the discovery they made are astonishing, are stunning, not yet 
understood until today. Only a little of their discovery have been translated in, mat in mathematics and in technology, but they made a discovery that are really impressive. So I want just to tell you something about this, this, this man. This is Max Planck. This is the one that has been able to discover that reality is not continuous, but is made by, by, by Lego, little Lego. He's not only, a, he, he's not only realized that that's, that's very, very impressive, but he has been able to quantify exactly the units with an impressive precision. I want just to tell that only that if this value could be different by only 1%, the reality couldn't exist and we couldn't exist. Just 1% different than this value. That's something impressive. So wh what else he discovered for us? What he told us? I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. Everything that we regard as existing postulates consciousness. So he has done an impressive discovery in, in, in physics, but he has done also an impressive discovery related to our relation. So reality and consciousness have a, a strong relation. So the reality is not something that is there and is independent from us, but our consciousness have a crucial role in creating the reality we, 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 observe, we observe at Saudas. You allow me to say that in this moment, reality, our reality, because we are creating it in this moment, though we don't understand because it's a very deep process, but in this moment, all our interaction is creating this reality. I know that it's difficult to understand, but this is what he's saying in another words. Sorry. No, no, thank you so much. So consciousness, consciousness, what, what, what is the definition of consciousness? The first one to try to give a definition of consciousness was Descartes. Uh, he said the ability to observe our own thinking, to be aware that we are thinking, thus existing. So we are existing as we are able to, to think and to, to, to direct our thinking on ourselves. The normal uh, actual definition of consciousness, if you look for vocabulary or vocabulary, is the state of being the awake and the aware responsive of one's surrounding. Awake and aware responsive of the one's surrounding. But I, I like to quote also the father of experimental psychology because he say, we, we know the meaning of consciousness as so long as no one asks us to define it. So consciousness is something that is related to us. So. But uh, about consciousness, I want just to tell you something about one of the most crazy experiments, uh, and I invite you to go on Google and look for something about this, this experiment, the double slit experiment. Feynman, a professor at Princeton, before to explain this experiment to his student, was used to say, we choose to examine a phenomenon which is impossible, absolutely impossible to explain in any classical way, and which has, and which has in the heart of quantum mechanics. In reality, it contains only mystery. He, also, he was also fun to say, all of quantum mechanics can be glanded from carefully thinking through the implication of this single experiment. Why? What are the, implica the implications of this experiment? This experiment is a very simple, it's a double slit experiment and a flu of electrons or of atoms are sent through this to, to, to slit. And, then, and what happened? They found that if nobody is watching was this piece of reality is sended through this double slide, the double slide that what, what we send can be an electron, a proton, can be an atom, do something that is magic, can be both particle, can be both waves, can, be, can interact with himself. But as long as we put uh, any kind of device a, a, a camera or a device that can detect what he's doing, he stopped to do the magic. So he do the magic only if nobody is watching to him, but he's not 
the act of watching that make he change his behavior is enough to put a sensor that can detect what he will do to make he change his behavior. So why have all the scientists say this is a experiment it can send you crazy? Because we, we, which is the what is the implication of this experiment? And I invite you to Google and to look for YouTube, the Dr. Quantum double slit experiment, because you, you will see exactly how does it work. Let me say one minute something to add, because all of you maybe are thinking, what is this concern with the art? What, I, what we said, art is creativity. So we are talking about creativity, our most powerful capacity to create. So all this is possible because of our consciousness, what I call a senseness, but it's okay. Let's talk about consciousness now. Because it's related to our creativity. And without the subquantum physics, we cannot explain how creativity interacts with us, how can create reality. So that's why art, science, science, creativity. Thank you so much. Uh, this individual, who is the, who is the fundamental postulate of quantum physics, they made the potentially the most radical human intellectual revolution in the history of humanity. Because one of the implications of their discovery is that any little piece of reality has a consciousness. So talking about heart, talking about creativity, a single electron has a consciousness, is able to change his behavior based on what is happening on the surround, is able to change his behavior based on what is expecting, who's observing his behavior. I know this, this, this can, be, can be very strong because we, we, we are here talking about the, the consciousness of humans, how humans are able to interact uh, constructively or not between one or, or the other. And, and this man is, t is telling us that also an electron, also an atom have a consciousness and the reality is made by consciousness. Is no matter that generate thought, is thought that generates matter. Giordano Bruno is considered a human symbol of free thought and liberty of expression. Uh, he told this 400 years ago. Anyone who's not shocked by quantum theory has not understood it. Consciousness, so the new definition of consciousness, modern definition for consciousness, considering also quantum physics, is that everything that exists is endowed of consciousness. And this is Schrödinger. Schrödinger is the one of the infinite uh, possibilities. You know the, the, the Schrödinger, the, the function wave of Schrödinger. Schrödinger is the one that say uh, the paradox of the cat that is uh, uh, contemporary, uh, alive, and dead. So he, he found that the reality is made at infinite possibility, and what is manifest, actualized, is, uh, is only like the, the tip of an iceberg but all the possibility coexist in superimposed manner. There is a, a and, and this is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, uh, th that, th that, that's the, the most huge deep revolution that can happen in the life of uh, 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 every one of us, because uh, every one of us has a terror of uncertainty. Every one of us is usually, this is the normal how the brain works, so we are, we are producing truth at uh, any moment, uh, and truth, uh, we want truth to obey, and uh, we want the, every other uh, obey to the truth we, we, we have, because we have a terror of uncertainty. He discovered that reality is made by uncertainty. The reality exists thanks to uncertainty. It can be a completely very quantum leap in the consciousness of each one if we can start to love uncertainty instead to try to, to, to go far. No, no, no. There is a fundamental error in separating the part from the whole. Unity and complementarity constitutes reality. Oh, I, I, I go out from the time, so I go <laughs> to, <laughs> to look at uh, science. Uh, no, I get only the point. So 
Uh, uncertainty is what gives us the possibility to live in space-time, is what make is what makes universe exist and evolve. As you start loving uncertainty about everything, about everything, about yourself, about the other, about the future, about the past, your reality can start to change instantly. But uh, as I, I, I used my time in this way, I want to go straight uh, to, to the point. So, I prefer to be optimistic and be wrong than pessimistic and be right. I think this is the most powerful teaching, the most ingenious, brilliant mind humanity have can told us. Because our thoughts, our imagination have an influence on the reality we live. Another experiment I suggest you to Google for is entanglement. Entanglement, the non-locality, the spooky action at a distance. This is enough to change completely the idea of each one can have about reality, about the power that each of one can have on reality. But I want just to conclude my, my speech uh, with uh, a little exercise love, joy, and kindness. Giordano Bruno says that there is only one supreme force which unites infinite worlds and makes them come alive. And this is love. This action at a distance, that is a quantum physical phenomenon, spooky action at a distance actually happen. Particle can communicate across space, doesn't no matter the distance, uh, as if the separation doesn't exist. Some little piece of reality, such as electrons, but also atoms and molecules, has shown the ability to communicate and generate effect at the effects at a distance, as our body is made of many, many little pieces of such things that have this ability, we can easily assume that any of us can potentially exert an action profitable or not on the other and all that exists regardless the distance in space-time, regardless any idea of physical separation. And what is the key of this communication? What is the key of our possibility to have a direct communication on everything that exists? Is what Giordano Bruno told us 400 years ago, is love. Love, happy, and grateful. That's what makes the connection start to be profitable. We are all born in this world to be in love with joy and kindness. Thank you. As they're coming up, if I can also just say to Dr. Marchese, uh, in terms of the art involved, uh, I created a play based on this, what you're speaking about. So it's really working together with the art. It was called The Case of the Missing Universe, A Subatomic Adventure. And all of the action plots in the play revolved around things like the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle or Schrodinger's Cat or many of the other quantum physics theory. So I'm right in line with you there, and thank you very much for the presentation, and thank you for the comments. It was great.